All right. Thank you very much, Julie. Uh, good morning, good evening, uh, good afternoon, good night, depending on which part of the world you're in. Um, you're right on time for the best part of the annual meeting. This is it. If you had missed this, you wouldn't have you wouldn't have gotten anything because we are going to talk about working groups and task forces, which are the engine of the alliance. That is where everything happens. So um, to start us off, I would like us to imagine we are back to being in our early teens. Yeah, early teens, mid teens, because that is the time we are thinking of high school depending on the education system you have there's going to be a global um, high school expose where we are going to where we are going to have the best four high schools coming to pitch coming to woo you coming to you know catch you and get you to their high school so they only have like two minutes to to pitch to get you so that then you move to their, their high schools for, so that they can tell you more about their high school. Um, I've done my, my background work. I know they're the best for, they have the best structures of the best teachers. They are theoretical as well as uh, practical and they have extracurricular activities. So um, without wasting any more time, um, I'd just like to give you a brief that there are four and uh, the first high school is case management high school. And then we have child protection minimum standard high school. Uh, the next one is community level child protection high school. And last but not least, we have assessment, measurement, and evidence high school. So um, they are here and they are ready. And uh, so if you don't listen keenly, you will not get that very important point that will make you make that decision. All right, case management high school, the floor is yours. Let's see how many people you get. Hi, thank you so much for that amazing uh, introduction. Um, so I will speak just very quickly about uh, why you should be joining our uh, session on case management. So case management is a core component of child protection programming in emergencies. As a sector, we have made significant advances in delivering quality case management services around the world. Case management is a unique in that it addresses the needs of individual children. So the case management task force has created field informed tools and resources uh, to improve the important work we do with vulnerable children and families. Last year, a significant amount of guidance has been developed by the CMTF, including uh, on adapting child protection case management to the COVID-19 pandemic. So this year, we have built on that and worked individually and jointly with other working groups and task forces on a number of exciting projects and resources. Based on the feedback from local practitioners and in collaboration with the Learning and Development Working Group, we developed a training on remote case management for frontline workers, as well as for those managing case management programs. We're also working on updating and improving the global case management training package with a new structure and more specialized modules and on a toolkit on community engagement in case management in collaboration with the community level child protection task force. So to strengthen uh, community engagement in the design and implementation of case management services. So if you want to learn more about the activities and resources that the case management task force has been working on and find out how your agency can start participating in the case management task force, join us in our next session. Thank you. Thank you. I think I'm up next. I'm Joanna and I work with the Child Protection Minimum Standards Working Group. As the Alliance releases its strategy to center children and their protection across our common humanitarian effort, we want to invite you to learn how the CPMS Working Group has been contributing to that vision and what our plans are for the next few years. Many discussions this week on topics such as prevention, integrated programming, infectious disease outbreaks reflect the CPMS as the foundation of our work. The Alliance's clarion call reminds us that we each have a role to play to strengthen quality and accountability within our sector, and that the CPMS is our practical starting point. We often speak about quality programming and how the standards help us to achieve and measure it. However, the CPMS are also a means to achieve accountability to children and their families. We're encouraging senior managers across agencies and sectors to put children and their protection 
at the center of their programming and reporting through the institutionalization process of the CPMS. So please join us to discuss how we can reinvigorate that process within the Alliance. The five-year strategy invites humanitarians from all sectors to increase their collaboration with us in order to prevent risks and to address harms affecting children. If you missed today's hot off the press session, which unpacked our working across sectors initiative, then join us now and get the details for the microsite. Humanitarian standards benefit from being adapted to the local context. We will introduce you to our new animated explanation of how to adapt to the CPMS, as well as the instructional video on selecting and contextualizing indicators. Are you ever at a loss for words to explain children's protection? Well, if you haven't looked at our illustrations gallery, we'll take you there. In our session, we'll be sharing updates, answering your questions, and hearing your experiences of using the minimum standards in refugee contexts for ongoing COVID-19 response and recovery in evaluations and beyond. It's going to be an informative and interactive session, no exams, we promise, with our colleagues from the Case Management High School. All right, I'm up next um, to try to convince you to join the Community Level Child Protection High School. Uh, my name is Michelle and I co-lead the Community Level Child Protection Task Force, or in this case, high school. And my pitch is simple. Does your organization engage volunteers from the communities in which you work to support child protection case management programming? Uh, please use the reaction function on Zoom to raise your hand or give a thumbs up if your answer is yes that you are working with community volunteers in case management. If you answered yes, uh, please join the Community Level Child Protection Task Force, where we will be discussing community engagement in case management project currently being implemented in coordination with the Case Management Task Force. We will be sharing the findings from the research conducted in 2020 and 2021, discussing your experiences in engaging community volunteers in case management, including the successes and the challenges and then providing a sneak peek at the upcoming toolkit for community volunteers engaged in case management and the associated training manual. Uh, Kenna, my co-lead, and I hope to see you there. Thank you. Hi, everybody. I'm Selena from the Assessment, Measurement, and Evidence Working Group. I'm here with my colleagues, Christine Michalidi, um, who is the co-lead with World Vision, and Mark Canavera, who is not able to join us today, but from the CPC Learning Network. So I just wanted to go through what we're, we've been working on this past year and some upcoming activities for the AIM Working Group. And it seems like we're in some fierce competition with the neighboring high schools today. So we work to develop technical tools and guidance, strengthen the evidence base in CPHA, and build capacity related to AIM. What are we currently working on? Well, over this year, we've sought to strengthen preventive programming in support of the prevention initiative by developing a brief and tools to identify risk and protective factors so that we could better understand the causes and drivers of negative outcomes for children. And we've developed a practical brief with examples and tools um, and approaches to identifying risk and protective factors. We've also developed a position paper on prevention in support of the prevention initiative, which I'm sure many of you have read for this annual meeting. Few, in addition to all the prevention work, we're working collaboratively with our members to define what we mean by evidence-based programming in CPHA, so we can become more effective generators of evidence. As Joanna mentioned, we've recently developed an enhanced indicator table to measure the child protection minimum standards, a guide on how to select and contextualize indicators for programs, projects, and humanitarian response plans. And lastly, an instructional video to support practitioners. We're also putting together an on online learning series to build capacity, um, including on techniques for interviewing children as key informants and focus group discussion participants. And this year we'll be developing tools and guidance on identifying risk and protective factors 
specifically related to children with disabilities. So come and join us to collaborate and learn more from our other members and to contribute to strengthening the assessment, measurement and evidence related activities in the sector. So come join Christine and I after and we'll answer all of your AIM related questions. Thank you. Thank you all the high schools. We really appreciate We This is going to be a very difficult decision to make um but we have to make it all the same the case management high school and child protection minimum standards high school they're going to be in one room and community level uh, child protection high school and assessment um measurement and evidence high school they're going to be in another room room two and the other the earlier two are going to be in room one how do we get there? Uh, Julia, our producer, is going to tell us exactly how we get to their respective rooms. Mm -hmm.